Welcome. So this is Dr. Morton, and uh, I, I'm going to do a final exam review today. I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, review uh, an, a form, previous exam, uh, and let's see, I have it here. Yeah. So this was one from December 13th, 2018. Um, you can see we went a lot later in those days, uh, almost two weeks later. Well, no, I, but a week later for sure. All right. So I'm going to go through this, and uh, uh, I'll probably take about uh, 30 minutes, and shouldn't take too long. Okay, so um, let me transition. So the first thing I want to do is work this first problem. Uh, so we look at this, and we have B, C, D, C prime D, B prime C prime D, and C, D. So the first thing, it's in SOP form. We want to go to POS form. Uh, there will be a couple of those problems probably on the test. And I want you, as you look at this, the first thing you do is inspect it to see if you can use any of the simplification theorems to, uh, to make this better or simpler. Okay, so you should remember our simplification theorems look like this, uh, straight out of the book. And we have three simplification theorems. The last one's the consent theorem. First one is we combine terms. Next is we eliminate a literal. And the next we eliminate a term, okay? So let's see which ones of these we could apply here. So, so it looks like we have a CD and a BCD. So here we can, we can eliminate a term, and that is S3. So first we'll apply S3, and we'll eliminate BCD. And then we'll apply S3 again, at this time not with CD, but with C prime D. And here we have C prime D, so we can eliminate that term. So now we're left with C prime D plus CD. Now the easy thing to do here is just to factor out a d, d times c prime plus c, and so that's fine. And it turns out this this simplifies to one, so that just gives us d. But we can also look at this and we can use uh, s one, and apply it here. We have a c prime d and a c. We can combine these into just d. The c drops, and so. So that's our first one, pretty straightforward. All right, let's look at this one. This was in POS form, and we're going to SOP. Again, we look and see if we can apply S1, S2, S3. Don't worry about the consensus theorem, although you're welcome to apply it if you can figure that out. Okay, so, uh, so let's inspect it. Well, we have an A, B, C. We have an A prime B C, so that looks like we can apply the, uh, we can combine terms, and uh, that's S1 again. Um, yeah, and so that gives us, we'll combine these two terms, the A drops, and we're left with the quantity B plus C. And then there's not nothing else we can do, so then that's going to be times B prime plus C plus D. All right, now we can use the M and F. Which is uh, which is uh, the multiplying and factoring theorem, and that's if we go back to our um, diagram here. Uh, so our conversion laws: we have the first distributive law C1, second C2, and the multiplying and factoring is C3, which is just x y plus x prime y equals the quantity x plus z. Or sorry, x y plus x prime z equals x plus z quantity times x prime plus y. And so that's what we're going to use. So let's do that. So we'll use, we're going to use C2 then for this, which is the multiplying and factoring theorem. And we'll have, we'll take the B times this and the B prime times that. So we'll get B times C plus D plus B prime times C. And then we can distribute the B in here, and that just gives us BC plus BD plus B prime C. Now, we can simplify this because we can use uh, S1 and combine B prime C and BC to just C. So that gives us uh, C plus uh, BD because these combine to C. So we're just left with C plus BD. Now let's check that. We'll use a we'll use a 
we'll we'll make a little bitty K map here, and and then we'll see if we can make sense out of this. So we'll set this up. We have four variables A, B, C, and D. So we'll put A, B, C, D like we always do, and we'll plot uh, we'll plot the uh, this up here B plus C quantity times B prime plus C plus D. Now remember the way I do this is I invert these. Pretend they're ones, but then I plot zeros. So if I invert B plus C, I, I get B prime C prime. And if I invert B prime plus C plus D, I get B plus uh, I get B C prime D prime. So B prime C prime. If I look at B prime C prime, then uh, what I what then what is that is the uh, that's the outside columns and the top two rows. So I'm going to put zeros here outside columns in the top two rows. And then B, C prime, D prime. Uh, here we're just going to have two boxes. And so B is the middle two columns. C prime is the top two rows. So that's these four boxes potentially. And D prime is the top two. So that's going to be zeros up here. Okay. And now if I put my ones in, that's going to be this group of eight and this group of four. Remember, powers of two only, we can't do six, that's not legal. Well, this group is just C, and this group is just B, D. So our answer is C plus B, D, and it checks. Okay, now let's do this. This is your bread and butter combinational design problem. This you should be able to do in your sleep. So we're gonna take, remember, we, we wanna be able to number these squares. Uh, 0, 1, but we flip the bottom rows, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we'll, I'll use hex, A, B, C, D, E, and F are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we plot these. We put a 1 here. I'm going to leave out the 0, so that'd be a 0. 1 down there, 1 here one here, one here, don't care down there, one here, zero there, zero there, zero there, zero there, don't care here, zero, zero, don't care. So it looks like I can do a group here, a group here, an entire row uh, column here, and then I do have these I can do in red, these but since they're only adding don't cares I don't obviously don't need these so these will these will definitely be non-essential non-essential prime impotence they're still prime impotence but they're definitely not needed and it turns out there's a one here that's not covered by anything else a one here not covered by anything else and a one here not covered by anything else so all three the wraparound group the group of four here and the column are all essential prime impotence so I have a full total of uh, one, two, three groups of four, and one, two. So I have five PIs, three essential, and two non-essential. And then when I write the solution, I'm just going to look at the ones that I've circled there. So this row, this column is easy. It's just A prime B. So I'll write this down. SOP form is A prime B plus, um, I'm going to, and I do use this don't care down here, so this is definitely going to be a one. These others I'm going to take as zeros. And then uh, this uh, group of four down here is going to be A prime C. Oh, yeah, A prime C. And then this group, this wraparound group is going to be A prime D prime. So that's my solution. Now if I plot the zeros, I still put in the don't cares, okay, because you, you might want to use them. And then I'll put in all the zeros. Zero here, zero, zero, and then zeros here. Now here, I'm going to have this, and I'm going to have this one wrap around. So this one is going to be uh, 
it, well, it would be a, but it, if there were ones, but since there are zeros, it'll be a prime. And then uh, this wraparound, uh, if they were ones, it would be uh, b prime, c prime, d, but I'll flip it and make it b plus c plus d prime. So that's the solution. The, PO, the POS solution then is a prime plus b plus c plus d prime. And uh, yeah, so that looks good. Um, and you can see how you can get this because it's easy to factor the a prime out. And you just factor out the a prime and you get uh, b plus c plus d prime. So obviously, uh, oh, sorry, plus, no, that's wrong. It's a prime times that because it's SOP, POS form. Yeah, so anyway, so this is correct. All right, so that's this problem. And notice this, this don't care what you take as a one, regardless of whether we did the POS or SOP solution. Here we'll take that as a one, so it's not included as a zero. And here we'll take these as zeros, just like we did. All right, let's look at this flip-flop. So this flip-flop, so first of all, this is VHDL code over here, and you, you probably can't see it. Uh, let me see if I can blow it up over here. Uh, and I'll blow it up a little bit more. And I'll move this over. Yeah, I think you can see it now. Let me switch. So, yeah, so, so you can see, again, in VHDL, in VHDL, we separate out the port list by itself and call that the entity, and then we use the port list in our architecture, whereas in Verilog, we have a module, and we start the module with the port list, and then we have the guts of the port list, the guts of the module here, just like we do the architecture here. Uh, here we say architecture. And we're going to use this entity, which is named flip-flop. So architecture flip-flop uh, A of flip-flop, which is our entity, is, and then, um, uh, yeah, and then we do this. Uh, we add a, a temp signal that doesn't show up in the port list. And uh, we do the same thing in Verilog. We just don't put it in the port list. We just declare it separately. All right, so in any, any event, um, so this, we then, instead of an always block in VHDL, we have a process block. So let me, let me take a second and rewrite this maybe in, in Verilog. Uh, yeah, hang on one second. Okay, so I rewrote this in Verilog. So we have module flip-flop. In our list, we have D, clock, clear not, set not, Q, and Q prime. And then we declare input, D, clock, clear not, set not, and output, Q, and Q prime. And then an internal signal, register temp. And then in the always block, always at, pause edge clock, neg edge clear not, neg edge set not. Begin. Uh, and then we have if clear not equals zero, temp equals zero. Else if set not equals zero, temp equals one. Else if te else temp is assigned the value of D. And we use this funny assignment operator, the less than equal sign, just like in, um, uh, oh, I didn't switch it, sorry. Uh, so module flip-flop, here we have D, clock, clear not, set not, and Q, Q prime. Input, D, clock, clear not, set not. Output, Q, Q prime. Internal signal, re temp, it's a register. Um, and then we have always at, pause edge clock, neg edge clock, neg edge set not. Now notice this temp has to be a, a, a reg because we're going to make it the left-hand side inside our always block. Then we have begin for the always block. If clear not equals zero, and it's equals equals zero because it's a logical test. Temp equals zero, um, and uh, we use when we want to use an assignment operator like that, uh, the non-blocking. So we use less than equal zero. If, else if set not equals zero, then temp is uh, assigned the value one. Else temp is assigned the value of d. N for the always block, and then outside the always block, we have these conditional assignment operators uh, here. Uh, Q is assigned temp, and Q prime is assigned not temp in module. So that's the flip-flop.
All right, so let's let's answer some of the questions about that. So, so, uh, so what kind of flip flop? Well, obviously it's a D flip flop. Uh, how many different states can it remember by itself? Just uh, two states, a zero and one. Will this pro will the always block execute on a change in D? No, because uh, here's the same same sensitivity list. Although we we use pause edge, neg edge, neg edge, but you have to have all edge signals or all level signals in the in an always block. This is of course is VHDL still, uh, and so uh, no D is not in here. Uh, but so D, a change in D does not trigger execution of this always block or process block. Uh, uh, so the answer is, will the process block execute on a change in D? No. Is the clock rising or falling? It is a rising edge clock. Uh, and then you put bubbles on your two on your clear knot and set knot, and C is of course a D input. So this is clear knot, set knot, D input, and then add bubbles as needed. Uh, uh, so it, it in this case uh, it is a falling edge clock. Sorry, uh, and I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, so I should have uh, over here. Uh, yeah, I didn't write this. Actually, I made a mistake. I should have. This should have been neg edge. Neg edge clock, because um, I'm copying it from the Verilog. You can see here. Uh, this is the idiom. Uh, this is the idiom for the. Uh, clock tick event and clock equals zero. That means falling edge. All right. Regardless, don't worry about that. You don't need to know that. All right. But, but it is a falling edge clock. Uh, and I and on your test, it's all Verilog. I, there's no more VHDL. We, that's one of the reasons I wrote the book. Um, okay. What does Q uh, if if clear not is zero and set not are zero, then what is Q equal? Well, since we test clear not first, it's going to be zero. It, you'll if this if is true, these other ifs are never tested. Uh, the signal temp is not in the port list. That's true. It's an internal signal not available to the outside world. All right. Um, I'm going to skip through these. Uh, and uh, this 8-bit 2 is complement of 51. Um, the main thing here is you have to pad out to 8 bits. Um, so you have to make sure what will 51 fit into. Well, it's less than 64, so it would fit into... Uh, it would fit into... Um, yeah, it would fit. It it it, it would fit in uh, positive, negative. You can go up to minus. Uh, uh, you can go up to minus 64 to plus 63 with eight bits, because you have you can represent 256 different things: 64 negative numbers, 64 positive numbers. Um, so I'm sorry, one 128 uh, different things. Oh, sorry. Actually, you only need seven bits because that's 128, right? Okay. Um, well, maybe I'll do it real quick. All right. Uh, so let's switch that this. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that real fast. I, don't know. I need to get through this. One. Let's see. Okay. So I'm I'm going to do this quick. So 51. We just we just do divide by two. So that's uh, that's 25, right? Remainder 1, 225 is 12, remainder 1, 212 is 6, remainder 0, 2 into 6 is 3, remainder 0, 2 into 3 is 1, remainder 1, 2 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. So it's low level, low order bit, next, 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 and uh, next. So let's check. So that's 1, 2, uh, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So that's 48, plus 2 is 50, plus 1 is 51. Okay, so that checks. And then you, but you have to pad out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits, and now you can invert it. So you start from the right, copy bits till you get to the first one, copy that as well, and then invert it every other bit. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And that's, this equals minus 51 in two's complement, and this equals plus 51 in two's complement. All right. Uh, let's, I'm not, I'm going to skip these. But just remember, when you do this retraction, you, you want to, you want to borrow the one, you put a zero and a two here, and then you borrow one from that, put a two here, and so forth. Okay. Uh, 
we did this one. Uh, we did this one in class on Lindsay. So I'm, I'm probably going to skip over this. I think this is the same one. Uh, and remember, you just look at the encoding uh, to get the DA. You want all the paths into where the A is one. There's only one node where A is one. It's here, and the paths in one comes from uh, S one. So that's uh, because it's zero one coding. That's A prime B, and then X has to be one X plus the path in from itself, A, B, X, A, B, X. And actually these combine to uh, B, X. And then the D, B, you take the path in here because B is also one there, and you take the additional path in here. So you're gonna take B, X plus the path from here, A prime, B prime, X. There's only one path into this node and that, car, that gets all the paths. And then the Z's are pretty easy, the Z1, is just going to be when we're in uh, a b and x is zero a b x prime and z2 is just going to be a b x remember these are melees and then these are just associated with the states z a z b z c and uh, those are simple uh, you uh, so z a is just going to equal the state a prime b prime since it only appears here. If it appeared other places, we'd have to add those. ZB is just going to be here, A prime B, and ZC is just going to be AB. All right. So let's look at this one real quick. Uh, this is a problem um, where we have, uh, yeah, I think we worked this one in class. This is uh, two previous inputs are the same, and one uh, if they were different. So we're looking for the two previous inputs being the same. So uh, x is 0, uh, z equals 0 if the two previous inputs were the same, and 1 if they were different. So we just look at the two previous inputs. So that so of the, of the two previous inputs, there's four possibilities. The two previous are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So those are the four states we have to remember. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And so if we're in 0, 0 and we get another 0, then we still have zeros. And since they were the same, z should be 0 because they were the same. If we get a 1, uh, we still output a 0 because the last two uh, were 0. But now we're in S1 where they were different. In S1, if we get a 1, then we have 1, 1. So we're going to we're gonna go over to here on a 1. And we'll output a 1 because they were different. And if we get a 0 then uh, we're going to go to 1, 0, and we'll still output a 1 because they were different. And from here, if we get a 1, uh, if we get a 1, uh, then we go over here because now, uh, and we'll output a 1 because they were different. But if we get a 0, we're going back to here because now they're going to be the same. But here they were different, so we'll output a 0. From S1, if we get a 1, we're staying here. And we're outputting the zero because they were different. Sorry, this is a one because they were different. Uh, and, uh, here, uh, and then if we get a zero, we now have uh, zero one. So we're going back to here on a zero, and we're going to output a zero because they were the same. All right. So any node where they're the same, we're always going to output a zero. And any put out node where they're different, we're going to we're we're going to uh, output a one, which means actually that even though we called it a melee, uh, uh, and and our and our states are associated with the links, uh, we could also uh, asso associate them with the node since we know that on the next input, the output from S three has to be a zero uh, has to be a zero, and the output from zero zero or S zero has to be a zero. And the output from S1 and S2 both have to be ones. But you have to wait till the next input before you would assert that output. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, and then it's easy to copy it. So S0, you can see S0 and S1 from S1. On a, one, on a 0, we go to 2, S2. And on a 1, we go to S3. From S2, on a uh, 1, we we go to S2, and on a 0, we go back to S0. And from S3, on a 1, we stay there. And on a 0, we go back to S2. And that's really all there is to it.
Notice you always output ones for these nodes, and you always output zeros for these nodes. So that there's n so so you can really predict what the output's going to be based on the state you're in, which is basically makes it more like a, a, a more. But you don't get you, know, you don't get to assert that until the next one comes in. All right, this is our little problem where we have our counter. Remember, we have one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, uh, five uh, states here. There are no re re repeated states, so this is fine. So it's going to be six, seven, one, two, five. So we have them ordered here. So from zero, it's a don't care, it doesn't appear. So zero doesn't appear, three doesn't appear, and four doesn't appear. And then five, six, seven do appear. One, two, uh, five, six, seven. All right, so zero is a don't care. One, we go to two, so zero, one, zero. Two, we go to five, or one, zero, one. Three is a don't care, four is a don't care. Five, we go to, back to six, one, one, zero. Six, we go to seven, one, 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 and seven, we go to one, zero, zero, one. So now we just populate these, x, zero, one, x, x, one, one, zero. I'm going to leave out the zeros, and then here we do x, one, zero, x, x, one, one, zero. And then, yep, and then, uh, Oh, let's see. Uh, 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 so yeah, one, one, zero. And here we do x, zero, one, x, x, zero, one, one. So this one's easy. That's just going to be, so this is going to be uh, b, uh, yeah, b. And um, this one's pretty easy. It's going to be there, and it's going to be the wraparound. So that's just going to be uh, b prime plus a c prime so that's going to be b prime plus a c prime this is just going to be b and this one's going to be this and this one so that's going to be uh, c prime plus the, the uh, uh, yeah a b prime Okay, so that's it. Does this circuit have an input besides the clock? No, just the clock. And it doesn't have an output either, just the current state of the flip-flops. All right, so we're going to solve this one. Um, so uh, you're going to finish a state machine chart with the problem input x, output z, where z equals 0, and you're looking for the target 1101. Okay, so you start with nothing in S1, you get a 1. If you get a 1, then you're going to go up here to S1. If you get a 0, you're staying here because we're looking for a one. Here, if you get a, the next one, we're going up here, and a zero, we're going back here. Here, uh, you're looking for a zero, so you're gonna go here on a zero, uh, but if you get a one, then uh, what can you do? So if you get a one, you can still, uh, you can still say here, because you don't have to reset, so we'll, we'll just go back up to here. Uh, and then from here, if we get a zero, then we basically have nothing for the next target, so we're going to go up here, but uh, if we and back all the way to zero. But if we get a one, then we have the first one, and so we could, in theory, go up to here, up to S1. All right. Uh, so then we just have to solve these things. Uh, we can draw a state graph. I'm not going to ha probably have you do that. Don't worry about that. Uh, all right, so let's do the coding, straight binary, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. We want to do the DA, all the paths in where A is 1, so that would be here and here. One path into here, from here, A, B prime, X prime, plus uh, 1 here, two paths in here, one from itself, A, B prime, X, And one path in here, a prime b x. And the d b, okay, we take the path in from here, uh, a b prime x prime. And then we also take the path in here. There's two paths, one from here when x is 1, so that's a, oh, sorry. Yeah, a b 
x, abx goes in here. So plus a, b, x, plus the path in from here, a, a prime, b prime, x. So two paths in here. This one, a prime, b prime, x. Path here, a, b, x. And then the path uh, into here, a, b prime, x prime. a, b prime, x prime. So a, b prime, x prime, a, b, x, and a prime, b prime, x prime. And then the z only comes out a, b, it only shows up here, a, b, x. a, b, x. All right. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we'll do this one down here. So we've done we've looked at this one before, uh, but basically it, it has uh, it has these uh, parts. Um, so uh, it's a sequence detector one zero one or zero zero one. So notice it's really don't care zero one because the first one can be either a zero or one. So on from S zero we output a zero. This is a more, uh, and on a zero or one we go to S one. Then uh, the next one, on a zero, we go down here. And on a one, we're going to go back. Or you could even stay there, depending. In this one, it's a, it, it say uh, resets as soon as the target cannot be realized. Uh, you know, with, you know, or as, as soon as you deviate from the path of the target. So we'll go back here on a uh, one. Um, and then on a zero, we're here. Um, then... In S2, we're looking for a 1. If we get a 1, now we have either 0 or 1, 0, 1. So it don't care, 0, 1, 0, and this is a 1. And we have a target, we output 1 for Z. Uh, but here, if we get a 0, then we'll go back here. And then from S3, regardless of what we get, we're going here on a 0 or a 1. Because we're going to have the first item in the next target. So we consider this target plus reset all right and we can fill out the chart uh, so in s1 on a zero we're going to s2 and on a one we're going back to s0 we output a zero from s2 uh, on a one we're going to s3 um, but we output a zero in s2 and on a zero we're going back to s0 and from s3 regardless we're going to s1 and we're not putting the one in S3. All right, I'm not going to do this one, uh, but I will do this one up here. Uh, so, um, yeah. So this is a this is a sequential circuit. It has one input x, one output z. Z equals one if and only if the most recent input was one, and it was preceded by exactly two zeros. So you want exactly zero, zero, one. That's our target. But we can't have, we can't, but it can't be a zero there. All right, so we start in S0, we have nothing, and we're doing immediately. We start in S0, we get a 0, now we've got our first 0. Uh, and here we assume our previous uh, inputs were all 1s, okay? Okay, then, then uh, from S1, if we get a 0, we go here, and now we have two zeros. And then if we get a 1, then we're going to S3 on a 1, and we're going to say, okay, that's a target. Uh, if we get a 0, we'll go to S4, which means we have more than, more than two zeros. So it means we're disqualified. And as long as we keep getting zeros, we still have more than two zeros. If we finally get a 1, we're going back here. From S1... If we get a one, then uh, basically we can't. The target's screwed up, so we're going back here on a one. From S two, if we get a one, we're going back here. Sorry, from S two uh, on a zero, we're going back there because no, sorry, we did. We already did that. Uh, we're going back uh, on a zero. We're going there. Uh, so one here, zero. Yeah. So that's two paths out of there. And from S three. Yeah, from S uh, S three, uh, we're going to uh, 
if we get a uh, one, then uh, then we're going to go back to uh, s is zero. Actually, if, if regardless of what we get, uh, if whether we get a zero or a one, um, we're going well. If we get a, if we get a one, we're for sure going back there. If we get a zero, we could theoretically go to s one and we have our first zero in our next possible two zero sequence. All right, so that's that. And then, uh, let me just real quickly, I'm not gonna cover this one, this one's, I'm not gonna do this one, but I am gonna do this one. So uh, I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly, but uh, uh, because I'm out of time. But uh, so w what we wanna, we wanna fill in the JK flip-flop. The way we do this, first, what kind of clock, rising edge? What kind of asynchronous input? A set knot that's active low. All right, so where's our set not active? Is it in here? No, that's high. We, so it's active here. All right, and when it's active, it blocks all the rising edge clocks. So it blocks all these clocks. And it's, of course, it's asserted right here. So if we assume that Q is zero to begin with, then uh, then we'll say Q is zero here, and then we have to have a five nanosecond delay, so it'll start there. Now, where the clock edge is asserted is here and here. So now we mark down the values for J and K. J is one, K is zero, J is one, K is one. So now we know that we have to have this little offset on each one of these. So there's a five nanosecond, uh, five nanosecond offside he, uh, offset here. There's nothing really associated with the deassertion, but uh, the first active edge here, five nanosecond, five nanosecond. So we have two clock edges to contend with. All these are blocked by our asynchronous input, and we have the assertion of our asynchronous input at, at t equals zero. But we were told that, bef that, it's, that q equals zero before here, so now we know q is zero. And then at this point, it's a set, so it's going to go up and be set. It has to stay set until here. Here, we get j is 1, k is 0, so it's going to stay set till here. And here, it's going to toggle, so it's going to go low. So that's all there is to that. Now, a little notch here, and you have a drop there. All right. So... Um, Actually, let me do. Uh, yeah, so so that basically completes the review. At least that goes over that test. You can go back and play this a couple times and make sure you can answer these. If you can, if you can, ha if you can handle all these, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, I will do a live review uh, right before the test. I, I think I told my students it was going to be on Sunday at 9 p.m. So make sure you uh, you're there Sunday 9 p.m. I will send out an email. And that's pretty much it. We will talk to you later.